is ready. Let's get this thing started. FAU and FSU underway here tonight. Kyleen Philomala. Last year, Libero, this year, an outside hitter, opposite hitter, and sometimes Libero, she gets FSU on the board first. Yep, coach told us she's already played in three different positions in the first two weeks of season alone. She goes back to serve. She serves Rosano, who gets jammed up. A free ball opportunity now for FSU. Out of the middle, there's Corey Lewis. Last year, an All-American hitting 432. So far this season, Madison, she's hitting 450. I mean, she just keeps getting better and better, and that's because her confidence is growing and her experience is growing. A local product from right here in Tallahassee has given many a hometown fans plenty of reason to be proud. And there is a kill out of the middle for FAU. Maggie Allred, the freshman from Nolensville, Tennessee, is on the board. We're going to see Maggie Allred run a lot in front of the setter. She likes to run the one and the three set and is trying to work into that slide, but more so runs the one and the three. So Florida Atlantic is on the board with their freshman, and there's a service error by Caitlin Robine, one of a couple of veterans at the pin for the Owls. Robine checks out, Romina Cornelio checks into the back row for the Owls. Cornelio, another outside hitter who is an adept passer. Swing off the right side by Natalie DePaula. Another youngster who's going to make a name for herself, and there's a player who's made a name for herself. Once again, Corey Lewis. I love the decision to run through the middle as early and as often as possible. You'll see Corey Lewis go up with that three set, find some space between the blocker and get the kill. Emery Dupes drops in the ace, and it's great to see Emery playing once again. An all-ACC freshman back in 2021, broke her foot before her sophomore campaign, played but was less than 100% for most of it, tore her ACL going into last year, then tweaked her ankle going into this year. She is battling hurt, but she is happy to be on the floor. That ace was great for FSU, and that side out equally so for the Owls. And there we see Valeria Rosado getting her first kill of the night. Nice high bump set to her. She took her time and got the kill. That sends Brianna Anderson back to serve. Anderson, the transfer from LSU, who's one of the two liberos for the Owls, had a tremendous weekend last weekend in Lubbock, Texas, passing. She hails from just down the road and yes, Gainesville, Florida, stayed in the SEC by going to LSU, and now she's an owl in Boca Raton. Four-point lead for FSU. They run a 6-2 offense, kind of feeling, goes back to serve. Rosado off speed over the block and down. Rosado has a lot of offensive weapons. We saw her first, a little off the net, swung deep and high, and then the second kill of hers going with the off-speed tip. Smart shot by her. She's got a lot of really good court awareness. So second kill for Valeria Rosado on as many swings. Yane Henke turned back by the block. Rosado, a player who does a little bit of everything for the Owls, and she'll get credited for the stuff. Rosado did a good job at setting that block. You see her tracking the ball, a swing block, which means she uses her arms to get up to her max height on that block and shove it down. Madison Dyer crashing in there as well, number 14 for Florida Atlantic. Here's Rosado on the attack off the edge of the block and down. Rosado found that small area of space in between the middle blocker and the right side. And with all that power in her approach, she swung through and squeaked it in between those two blockers who really need to do a better job at closing that block. A 3-0 scoring rip for FAU. Once again, FSU jammed up on serve, receive, and all the momentum going Florida Atlantic's way. Coach Nelson before this match said their mindset is don't play to survive, play to win. And the aggression from the service line that I'm seeing right now is that play to win mindset. Olivia Hart serves it once again. Kelsey Perry with a big swing out of the middle. A player that Chris Poole and company didn't necessarily expect to see the floor as often as she has. But man, early on this season, she's certainly making it count, Madison. And you see there, she does a good job at identifying the hands of the blocker and swinging 
fast and away from them. She's learned a lot from Corey Lewis. Nice pass, and there's a good swing by Rosado off the edge of the block and out. That will send Rosado, who is averaging 3.35 kills per set, back to serve. The 3.35 kills per set on pace to be her most in any year of her Division I career. Kylene Filamawa got that inside the block. Good swing by Filamawa. And sometimes players look a little uncomfortable when they're more so off the net on their swing, but not Kylene Filamawa. She swings with a ton of bravery, confidence, and a lot of power every single time. That sends Jane Henke back to serve, one of the transfers into the FSU program. Another really nice pass by the Owls. That offense is humming, and it really, Madison, is due to some quality first ball contact. Exactly, Sean. You control the first pass, you get a three pass, then your setter has all of those options. Caitlin Robine running a quick tempo set a little bit inside and got the kill. Sends Dyer back to serve, dangerously close to an overpass. Phelan does well to save it for the Knowles. Back row attack, Rosado. She's scoring from everywhere. And that's why coach said you don't take Rosado off of the court. She can do it all from every single area. And I like the decision to set her in the back row right out of the gates. So the Owls have flipped the momentum. Chris Poole and company have seen enough. They call timeout early on here in set one. And I think that was a smart timeout by Chris Poole. They started with the momentum. Florida Atlantic got it back a little bit, had some aggressive serves. Florida State needed to get back into a rhythm. And right now, it's just FAU controlling that first ball contact, keeping their setter in system, and running a nice balanced offense. Florida State's got to clean up that first pass. As it stands, FSU trailing by one, hitting 500 early on in this set. As we take a look at the resume for Chris Poole, the second winningest active D1 head coach behind only Mary Wise at Florida, the fastest in the ACC to reach 200 ACC wins. 11 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances that was broken up by the COVID year with the shortened NCAA tournament field. FSU's made the tournament every year since. 24 All-Americans also at FSU, the last two being Audrey Koenig and Corey Lewis a season ago. And he has really just cemented himself in NCAA volleyball history. If you know college volleyball, you know Chris Poole. He's been around for a long time, and he's had a lot of success in that time frame. The reigning ACC Coach of the Year, in fact, Chris Poole, leading FSU back to the top of the conference for the first time in 11 seasons. And it's been great to see a packed house really from the drop, Madison. They watched a lot of good volleyball last year. They've been excited to come back to the gym. They also understood the assignment for the pool party. They're decked out. And we're going to replay this point here. Mark Edsel blowing the whistle <laughs> while Dyer was serving it in. So we'll do that once more. She's excited. FAU has some momentum. They're trying to keep with it. Dyer, who started her career at Sam Houston State University, serves it in once more. Villamawa off the edge of the block, and if you heard that shudder in my voice, it's because I thought I almost died. That ball came from such a sharp angle right into our screens where we are courtside, but you see her there with that quick arm swing, tooling the block, that block not set close enough to the pin, and she was able to find some room and some fingertips. Three kills on four swings for Kyleen Filamawa, who I mentioned last year was the libero for FSU, played outside some. Coming into tonight's matchup, has more kills early on this season than she had all of last year. She went back to her outside offensive history and how comfortable she was pretty quickly. It was a pretty smooth transition from her, from libero to an attacker. And I mentioned already, three kills on four swings. She's been pretty dadgum efficient so far as well. Lauren Robertson, FSU's second setter, tees up Corey Lewis, and that is what Lauren Robertson is particularly good at, Chris Poole says. Yep, Chris Poole said she's very comfortable with the chemistry she has with the middles and the tempo set to the outside, but you see her there with the one set to Corey Lewis, thumb down, snap on that ball, and get the kill. Bump set out to the outside, Robine goes off speed, out of system ball to Taylor Head, and Head hammers it right through the Terraflex. And one of the things that Coach Poole said that they're 
starting to try to iron out is the setter's relationship with Taylor Head and that speed of the outside attack that Tempo said that she likes. But you see her there, the out of system. She took that ball nice and high and well. Robine had a tough time handling the FSU block. Maddie Snyder had her hands in the right position. And the Owls knock it out of play. Timeout called by Fernanda Nelson. So we'll take a timeout with the Owls with FSU now leading by two midway through set one. Back here in Tallahassee, FSU leading set one 12 to 10 over the Florida Atlantic Owls out of the AAC. Nice stretch by Kyleen Philomala getting to that ball. Off speed attack by Taylor Head. And now it's the Owls scrambling once again. Head herself knocks it back down to the floor. That was a shot block by Taylor Head, who delayed her jump, hung in the air because she saw the shot coming, and then tapped that right down. DePaula off the right pin, got an assist from the tape, and it finds the floor for the kill for the freshman. DePaula's got a lot of range, and Coach said a lot of intensity. She's also a lefty, which means you have to line up differently on the block, and sometimes it takes the block a little bit more time to get used to. Out of the middle, instant offense for FSU. Madison, they love to operate through their middles, and Corey Lewis has been as good as they've come for quite some time. She's coming off of 13 kills, hitting 600. Her hitting efficiency for every match so far this season has been absolutely phenomenal. Nice pass here to Paula, the freshman dug up by Robertson. NK guides it over, and there's a big stuff block for Corey Lewis. We've called her name early, and we have called it often for good reason. And it's the efficiency on offense from Corey Lewis and her blocking technique. You saw her there tracking the ball, hands in front of her, and then that hop and press because her eye sequence was so perfect with that block. Perfect from the floor and a block as well for Lewis. Rosado dug up by Philomawa. Henke off the right side. Out of the back row, nice stretch by Philomawa. And there's another stuff block for Lewis. That was two solid defensive plays by Florida State. Philip Mawa laying out, keeping those rallies alive, and then Corey Lewis is locked in at the net. She's playing absolutely dominantly so far. Another timeout by Coach Nelson. Watch Corey Lewis go over to Henke, close that block. A bit of a trap set. There wasn't really much anywhere for Allred to go. So as a setter, you almost want to feel both of those blockers fronting that middle attacker and then maybe throw in a set to your right side to spread out those blockers. That's the final timeout for the Owls. But Madison, it was FSU who was scrambling first and called the first timeout of this first set. How do you like what you've seen out of the Knolls in response to Chris Poole calling that early timeout to reset things? It's all about controlling that first pass. We've seen a lot of clean contacts from Florida State after that timeout. And then that allows their setters who run a 6-2 which means they have three offensive options in the front row at all times. It allows those setters to spread out the offense. And they've done a really good job at cleaning it up. I mean, it switches momentum back and forth, the sport of volleyball, and Florida State has all the momentum right now. Florida Atlantic so far in this set is hitting 333, and you're going to win a lot of sets hitting 333. Problem for the Owls, the Knolls are hitting 533 in this set. If you like offense, so far, this has been the match for you. The Seminoles are extremely efficient. Last match against UNF, they hit 384 as a team, but three out of those four sets, they hit over 400. So they're just a well-oiled machine on offense. So on the back side of the timeout, Emery Dupes is set to serve it in for FSU. Five-point lead for the Knolls here at home. Make it four. So the timeout works for the Owls. They in effect, ice dupes, and they trim the lead down to four. That'll send Ava Norris in to serve, the sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. 13 sets played a season ago, already at 10 early on. Tried to track that down, and that's yet another kill for the Knolls. 
Corey Lewis is so good because she moves around her set. She runs the three, she runs the one. Right there, she's running the slide. Lauren Robertson and her have a, a nice chemistry going right now. And then Corey Lewis swinging high and off the top of the handle of Walker. Lewis and Robertson each heading off the floor. Kenna Phelan, the other of FSU setters, in to serve. And Madison, I know she's dropped serve there, but already has half as many aces as she had all of last season. Credit due to adding in the jump topspin. She went with the float there, though. 13 aces on the season with that jump topspin. It's really aggressive. It's really difficult on serve receive to get your platform underneath it because it's coming so fast. I'll be interested to see if she breaks that out here moving forward in this match. 13 aces, in fact, for Phelan, who had 26 a season ago. Taylor head into serve, nice pass. And there's a quality swing out of the middle. That is what good passing will do for you. Madison Dyer says thank you very much. And that is exactly what good passing does for you. It opens up all of your attackers, nice set. And then Madison Dyer with a really fast snap and arm swing, identifying the hands of the block and swinging down her body and cross. That sends Rosado back to serve. Good pursuit there by Taylor Head. Out of the middle, Perry turned back with one hand. She pushes it across. Hensley calls her own number. You have to keep a particular eye on the setter in a 5-1, and Hensley has been pretty efficient when she's called her own number so far for the Owls. And she almost has to be running a 5-1. You have an opportunity to be a point scorer, and you've only got two attackers in the front row. So she took it upon herself to gain the point for her team. Coach says she has a really high IQ. Rosado drops in the ace as well, and once again, the never say die Owls force FSU, who was on cruise control, to call a timeout, lead down to two. And it's the aggressive serving from both sides of the net that's getting the serve receive in a little bit of trouble. But as we see, when both teams have a good pass, they have the ability to run through those middles, right sides, outsides, and they can finish the ball pretty efficiently, but it all starts with the pass. Yeah, absolutely, off a of quality first pass. Each of these teams likes to run the middle and for Florida State have been as good as anybody, and Lewis has been particularly strong. Corey Lewis has five kills on five attempts. That is absolutely elite. She doesn't take a little bit to warm up each game. No, she comes into the game warmed up immediately. She runs the slide. She can hit high off the hands. She runs the one in front of the setter. It can hit through those gaps. And then she's also an elite blocker, identifying that ball, diving into those angles. And she just got it all. Three blocks, in fact, for Lewis, in addition to those five kills. She has been so incredibly valuable, obviously, for FSU throughout her entire career, but especially so in what has been a high octane and now particularly tight set one. And it's not surprising that it is tight because a lot of the times, an away team comes into it, they're the underdogs, they're just going to play all out. They're going to give you all that they have. We've seen that from their service line and how aggressive they've been from that attack. So I like the mentality from Florida Atlantic early on. So we'll see if Florida Atlantic can ride that attack and ride that momentum here on the arm of Valeria, Valeria Rosato, who is set to serve it in, trailing by two, set one. And that is over the back. It's a competitive serve, but it does miss nonetheless as FSU approaches the red zone. And that one, she caught the ball a little too far underneath it, and that caused it to rise and go too far outside the back line. That puts an end to a 3-0 run for the Owls. Henke to serve it in for FSU. Back set. And that got inside the block. Madison Dyer is fired up couple of hand slaps as she heads back to serve. Madison Dyer has a lot of power with each of her swings right there sneaking it in between the blocker's hands and the net. Like Lewis, she is also perfect from the floor. Philomalo ranges over to the bench. It'll be a free ball opportunity for Florida Atlantic. On the slide, all red turned back. Huge swing, FSU couldn't quite track that ball down out of the scaffolding, and that's another point for the Owls. And that was a solid out of system set for Florida Atlantic, was able to control that ball and then get almost an in system swing on it 
That was Robine swinging high and off the fingertips of Florida State's block. Robine dropping the hammer, and the Owls now hitting 435 in this first set have trimmed the FSU lead to one. Snyder turned back. FSU tries the outside, and Philomala tools the Owls block for a point for the Knowles. Kylie and Philomala puts in a lot of work in transition to get off the net, so then she can do her approach. She did it well right there. She didn't have a lot of time, but she's very fast and athletic, got off the net, and then got the kill. Hensley setting Robine, and man, she has been impressive, Madison. She has. Coach said Robine has a lot of range in every shot in the book. She spoke in terms of zone. She said Robine loves that four to four, four zone and hitting in that five and six range. And she was getting an earful from her head coach in that latest timeout. With more on that, here's Meredith Grimm. During that last timeout, I spent the majority of her time speaking to setter Victoria Hensley. It makes sense knowing that Coach Nelson's career was as a setter. She praises Hensley for her humbleness, her, how hardworking she is, and selfless. She runs this offense in a way that isn't flashy, and we're already seeing that so far in the game. Yeah, she has distributed the ball very nicely so far in this first set. The Owls running into a little trouble there off the serve, and FSU's lead swells to three, though, Madison. Yep, it does, and Florida State's block has really locked in. Right there, though, getting tooled. Nice swing by Florida Atlantic's right side. Natalie DePaula, who's swinging high off the hands of the block, swiping it off their arms. Tooled it into the antenna, did the freshman DePaula, and Robine goes back to serve. Dupes diving on serve receive. It's an overpass. DePaula tried to put it down, had it knocked back, and it's cleaned up at the net by her fellow freshman, Maggie Allred. First contact is everything in the sport of volleyball. Florida Atlantic with some aggressive serves, and you see there Lauren Robertson not allowed to jump because she's a back row setter right now. That was Valeria Rosario, my bad. And there's another overpass. FSU struggling with that first ball contact. Credit the Owls for administering even more service pressure here when it matters most. It's that kind of mentality. Don't play to survive, play to win. What an opportunity they have here. We see the jump topspin has been very effective for both teams. Dupes passes it up, head on the attack. Add a system ball out to the pin. Rosado misses the sideline. That out of system set a little too far inside. Rosado did everything she could in her approach to step in and get there. And then she was trying to turn it back down to the line and grab some fingertips, but just missed a little too far outside. And that comes from over rotating on your swing. So that allows FSU to step out by one. Served down the line by the Knowles. Rosado back on the attack, turned back. Picked up by Hensley, out of system ball to Rosado. Henke off the right side, once again picked up by Hensley. Owls out of system again. A third time out of system, and this time Taylor Head makes them pay. And that's Taylor Head being very experienced and comfortable. Maybe if it was a younger player, they would have passed that up and recycled it for their team to run their full offense, but Taylor Head took advantage of that ball and swung deep. It was a perfectly placed swing right into that deep corner. Set point. And a bump to Rosado. And that is out of play. Point Owls still set point for FSU. They need a side out. If you're Florida State, you think one play at a time. We need one side out. Focus on the pass. And if I'm Florida State, I'm going to run through Corey Lewis right here. She's been so efficient tonight. Norris will serve it in. And it is Lewis. And that does do it. FSU wins set one, 25-23. Florida Atlantic put a little bit of pressure on the Seminoles from the service line. Cleveland number four. I mean, the list goes on and on about how strong the ACC is. Six teams in the top 25, and somehow after two sweeps of top 25 teams, SMU is on the receiving votes category, but not in the top 25 themselves. Good start to the second set, though, for the Owls. They record the opening point, a kill by the freshman. Natalie DePaula gets us underway. The Owls making a change 
at libero. Isabel Northam wearing one of the two libero jerseys in this set. FSU sides out, equalizing one point apiece. I will say Emery Dupes is extremely valuable to have on the court. She just passed an absolute dime on serve receive and then covered that block so well. You can tell she's very comfortable in that libero jersey and she looks good. Especially valuable on serve receive. Emery Dupes at a system ball. Kyleen Philomala on the attack for FSU. And there's Corey Lewis coming away with another big rejection. Taylor Head crashing in as well. Taylor Head did a good job at setting that block. And then Corey Lewis, so quick and athletic, moving so dynamically along the net, pressing those arms and getting the block. Four blocks for the Knowles. Corey Lewis has had a piece of all of them. The service error goes back to the Owls. Two apiece early set two. Dupes jammed up. Robertson on the run. Snyder looking cross court, missed it. And Snyder didn't really have much of an area to go there. That block set and pressed at the right time. Snyder only thought she could go angle and then just missed a little too far outside. Good stretch by Philomala. Off speed by Lewis. That gets the Owls scrambling. Snyder got a hand on it. Now it's FSU sending the ball over. Rosado into the tape. Nice little rally back and forth. Florida Atlantic right there wanting the double contact called on Maddie Snyder who touched on the block and then seemed like touched it again, but looks like they're not going to get it. No call on the double contact. And we're back underway once more. Dupes dropped in an ace in the first set and induces a free ball here in set two. Lewis tried to shove it to the back corner. Tight pass, Robertson runs out of room. I don't mind that decision from Corey Lewis. We're probably not gonna see that very often. I don't think she pulls that move often, but trying to be quick, shoving it to that corner, but Florida Atlantic playing scrappy defense, playing very quick defense, and that's actually one of the identity pieces of that Owl team. So for the moment, FSU leads this set by one. Dupes goes back to serve. Tight pass. Hensley tried to take it over herself. Henke off the right side, turned back. At a system ball, this time for head down the line. Back bump, Rosado. Lewis, high reach. Rosado turned back once again, this time out of play. Credit Rosado, the veteran, for tooling the FSU block that largely has been terrific tonight. That block was right in front of her, too. They set up nicely. Rosado swinging with a quick snap crossbody down the line, tooling the outside arm of Henke. Rosado herself back to serve. Head off the pin. Robine, same story. Out of the middle, Dyer, we've seen her drop the hammer. This time she goes off speed. And FSU is going to get called for a lift. And that's a sign of a really solid middle attacker. That set a little too low. The three set, which means it's a gap set. That set a little too low. So she played it smart and tipped it into the block. And just like that, Florida Atlantic has the lead in this set. And that is a thing of beauty. Corey Lewis put that down automatically. Number eight in white continues to roll here tonight. And if you're Florida Atlantic, you almost have to have one of your pin blockers crash in and try and stop Corey Lewis because she's so tall. She contacts the ball at such a high point, and you need another block to slow down that attack. Jump top spin this time for Kenneth Thielen, and that misses long. Tight pass. Thielen makes the most of it. How about that set off the net to Taylor Head? 
Kenna Phelan is only a sophomore, but she has been so good for so long. She was Arkansas's Gatorade Player of the Year in high school, and now a sophomore with the full season of setting in that 6-2 rotation under her belt. She looks really solid. And so off the kill, head goes back to serve. And off the edge of the block and down, that's another kill for Caitlin Robine. I do want to point out, Maggie Allred, the middle for FAU, ran behind, which opened up a one-on-one -on -one situation for the outside. And she was able to use that one-on-one -on -one situation and get the kill. So great work off the ball there by the freshman, opening up an opportunity for a veteran pin hitter. Back the other way comes the Knowles. They run the middle with Kelsey Perry, and she puts it down for the kill. The coach said Kelsey Perry has learned a lot from Corey Lewis. And Kelsey Perry, also only a sophomore, but looking really confident so far this season. She's got really good chemistry with her setters. Madison, I, I would submit to you that to this point this season, I know Corey Lewis has done everything tonight for the Knowles. Lewis a little bit more offensive of the two middles. Perry a little bit more defensive of the two middles for the Knowles. Absolutely. We saw Perry in her opening match rattle off four blocks. Really impactful, momentous blocks. And she looks very confident with that block. She does really good with her eye sequencing, and then coach said she's really fast off the ground. So far, no blocks tonight for Perry, who does come into tonight leading the team, but she is two for three on her swings. First kill of the night for Maddie Snyder off the right side. Number 10 in white is on the board. FSU leads by one. DePaula, that is roofed straight down. Kai Philomala and Kelsey Perry teaming up for it. Kai Philomawa was there at the right time, in the right position. Look at her on the right side of your screen, pointing those bombs into the court and getting the straight down block. No covering that one. Nice pass there. Robine turned back. Back row. Rosado got it inside the block. That's Rosada's ninth kill, hitting well over 300. She gets a majority of the sets, and she's very comfortable hitting from every area of the court because she knows her team needs her. So Rosado off the back row attack now, rotates to the front row. Snyder down the line, got the Owls out of system. Another swing for Snyder, and Snyder's heating up here in set two. Snyder took advantage of that middle block not being closed all the way. Swung high and quick through that gap. The first set to Snyder, the block was good for Florida Atlantic. The second set, a little late to close, and Maddie Snyder took advantage. Snyder, the tallest left-handed player Chris Poole says he's ever coached last year. A kill and a half per set as a freshman. Right about the same mark this year, but she's hitting about 40 points higher. So the sophomore more efficient, and Phil Amala says, I like this hitting thing. It's been a while. <laughs> and she looks really confident doing it. She contacts that ball at a really high point, and she's got a smooth arm swing. She also hit inside that middle blocker, so it was perfectly placed and very powerful. Seventh kill for Kyleen Phil Amala, and just like that, the Owls call timeout trailing by three. Back here in Tallahassee, FSU winning set one, 25-23 in Tully Gymnasium. Sean Davison, Madison Fitzpatrick, Meredith Grimm, our entire crew on hand with you for this AACACC showdown. And Corey Lewis is just putting on a show, eight for 10 offensively, and now block number five for Lewis, number eight. She's so dominant. That middle attacker has nowhere to go. Corey Lewis read that cross-court swing and just shoved her arms, dove her arms into that angle, shutting off any ability for a kill. Lewis has recorded as many as nine blocks in a match in her career. And again, she's at five early in set two. Service error there by Taylor, or excuse me, Lauren Robertson and Madison. I noticed this on the stat sheet at the end of set one. In a 6-2 offense, Robertson had eight assists. I mean, the, the connection that Robertson has as a transfer coming in, immediately connecting with her hitters is very impressive, and it speaks to her experience. Corey Lewis dug up. 
Philomala takes it on first contact, this time for the Knolls. Back row, Taylor Head. Taylor Head is very experienced in that six rotation. She comes from Arkansas. She was a six rotation player for them all four years, and she brings that experience here today. And it's not even the fastest set, but she identifies the hands of that middle blocker so well and then swings high and off the hands. Four kills tonight for Head, hitting 400. All-American at the University of Arkansas last year off a trip to the Elite Eight. Good stretch there on serve, receive. FSU will try to add on to their lead. Snyder off Smead. What a smart shot by the sophomore finding the seam. And that might not have been a shot we would have seen from Maddie Snyder last year, but Coach said she's got more tools in her toolbox and she uses all of them more consistently than she did last year. Five-point lead here in this second set. Maddie Snyder off her third kill. Madison, what has impressed you most as we look on at Florida State? There's a lot of things you can pick, I'm sure. Exactly. I think just looking at the stat sheet right now, Kylene Filamawa, seven kills on 11 attempts. Corey Lewis, eight kills on 11 attempts. All players hitting almost 400, but Kylene Filamawa is a Swiss Army knife. She's a baller in every single sense of the word. Defensively, so elite, really physical at the net. And then offensively, you see her there. When she gets a quick tempo set right to her shoulder, she's able to capitalize every single time. She's a really fun player to watch and a must-have on the court for Florida State. Chris Poole speaks glowingly about Kylene Philomala. With more on Kai, here's Meredith Grimm. Thanks, Sean. Kylene Philomawa, according to Chris Poole, is their best all-around player. She's capable of anything they ask of her. In fact, she's already played outside, right side, and libero in the first weekends of this season. The Florida State Seminoles have such an advantage in knowing they can use her wherever they're struggling and that they will be successful. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Meredith. Philomawa played libero last year. She's an adept passer. She was one of FSU's better servers. She's showing that she can be efficient as an attacker. We've seen her block Madison, and she can also set balls effectively. She's a really good setter and out of system as well. Coach said she can kind of fill any gap or hole that they may have in their team. A couple of weeks ago, Chris Poole said it kind of figuratively, but I'm going to interpret it literally. What can't she do as she goes back to serve again? And she was also an elite high school player, Washington's Gatorade Player of the Year when she was in high school. Yeah, that was off of a torn ACL, no less. Got back after it and became the state player of the year. Nice block there by Rosado. She says, that's nice. Story time over. Why don't you talk about me a little bit more? And rightfully so. It was a good read by Rosado as well. First of all, great defense from Florida Atlantic with that never say die kind of mentality. And then Rosado reading that angle swing and diving her arms into that angle. Philomau was setting the ball out of system to Taylor Head. We said she can set balls and she proved us right. And it's almost like when she sets an out of system ball, she makes it in system. You're the person that she wants contacting that ball on the second contact if it's not your setter. So seven kills, five digs, a block, and now an assist for Kylene Philomawa. Taylor Head continues a great night offensively as well with her fifth kill. Rosado rolls it over the tape out of the middle. There's Corey Lewis doing her part once again as well. The leading scorer for the Knolls now tied with Rosado with Florida Atlantic for the leading scorers on the floor. And as a middle, you need to always be in the air. You need to always be an option for your setter, and Corey Lewis is in the air every single time holding that block. Nine kills on 12 swings, no errors, hitting a full 750. And Corey Lewis got her hand in there once again. That's a good read. It's knowing that the setter for Florida Atlantic, Victoria Hensley, is in the front row, knowing that she likes to take it on to and use herself in the offense. Nice tracking by Corey Lewis and block. Sixth block for Lewis. That's a service error by Dupes. And FSU through prowess at the net. Good first ball contact has stretched a tight second set now into a seven point lead off the back of a service error, no less. Back set, Henke is on the board. Henke is very physical. 
And she had a really successful freshman season. She became the first player in her program history at Cal State LA to be named National Freshman of the Year. So she's got a lot of success at a young age, and she's a great get for the Florida State Seminoles. National Freshman of the Year, All-American Yane Henke at Cal State LA. Also won a national championship, did she, at the D2 level over West Texas A&M. A player that Chris Poole is very excited about with more on Yane Henke. Here's Meredith Grimm. Coach Poole is so impressed with Yane Henke so far. She's always played the left front role, so asking her to start on the right side has been a lot, but she has handled the transition flawlessly. And Coach Poole is so proud of her playing at this high level, despite those challenges. Yeah, Yane Henke, an impact transfer for sure, coming in from the D2 level. Took a couple of years at the D2 level to acclimate here in America, Madison, but Chris Poole said she is clearly not a D2 player. Then he was quick to say, no offense to D2 players, there's clearly great ones, but she is certainly a D1 caliber player, and she hit 500 in her first D1 match in Auburn last weekend. That's amazing, and that's just a testament to her, her athleticism and her comfortability coming into a new system and performing in the way that she did right off the bat. 529 on 10 kills, no less, against Cal Poly for Henke. Nice swing, nice dig by Head. And FSU transitions out of it. Taylor Head has a lot of experience in that middle back position. And she's really good at reading. You see her there reading the shoulder of the attacker, knowing she's going to swing cross body and down and digging that ball straight up. Very impressive, Taylor Head. FSU hitting 429 in this set. Meanwhile, the Owls hitting a negative at the moment. Serve caught the take. And a misconnection there on the set attempt. And sometimes that happens when the opposing team starts to get a greater lead. Mistakes like that. Communication errors like that tend to happen whenever you feel yourself trailing far behind. Taylor had one of the four active career leaders in matches played in the country. A valuable pickup for Chris Poole and squad to supplement things at the pin. Look at the pursuit by Henke, and Head sends the free ball over. Philomawa. Digs it out of the net herself. Now it's Henke off the right side, and Henke has another kill. And that's one of the advantages to running a 6-2. Kenna Phelan has four attackers on the court with Taylor Head in the back row that she can set, and she does a really good job at running a balanced offense and sending that ball back to Henke on the right side. Strong service run for Taylor Head, but Kaylin Russ is going to get a little PT, a little playing time for the freshman off of Yes, Yane Henke's second kill on eight swings. So FSU reorganizing the troops with Kaylin Russ back to serve. One of a couple of freshmen who has seen the floor for Chris Poole's squad here in 2024. FSU two points away from the set. And that's a nice swing out of the middle for Kyla Rue. Good swing by Kyla Rue, who's Gaining some momentum, she had a good last match. She's working herself back into the lineup here. And that was Florida State's block just being a little too far off the net and not pressing enough. Rue, the senior from Auckland, New Zealand, just getting her season started, came into 2024 injured, but is going to likely be an impact player for the Owls this year. Speaking of impact, there's been a lot of it by everybody in garnet and gold and white here in this set. And FSU has a couple handfuls of set points to go up, two sets to none in Tully. Robine off speed picked up by Russ. Philomala tools the block and seals the deal for the Knowles in set two. Great set by Kenneth Phelan with that tempo all the way. Florida Atlantic certainly has done their part to add to the atmosphere, particularly in the first set where Victoria Hensley started things off serving. She does so again here. Off the right side, there's a kill for number eight, Kayla Richardson finding the floor and has a kill tonight for the Owls. Kayla Richardson is coming off of 13 kills, hitting 400. So I'll be interested to see if she can get into a rhythm here and help her team out. 
Hensley stays back to serve for the second straight set. The Owls are on the board first. Lewis was rejected by the block. FSU got a hand under it, but could not dig the ball up enough to put a play on the ball and get it across. That's a rare misconnection between Corey Lewis and Lauren Robertson. That slide set just a little too far behind Lewis, and it trapped her, causing her to swing into the block. Well, Madison, as it's often said, nobody is perfect, and Corey Lewis no longer is either. <laughs> First error of the night for Lewis. Snyder off the right side records another kill. Snyder is one of those players that hits the ball with a lot of force and a lot of power every single time she attacks it, and she uses all of that power to swipe it off the hands of the block, the middle blocker who was late to get the kill. So four kills now for Maddie Snyder. All coming in the last set now and a couple of points here in this third. She gets FSU on the board. Rue turned back. Good coverage there by Robine, who goes on the attack off speed. Picked up well by Dupes. Back row, Philomawa found the sideline. That's the definition of painting the line. Emery Dupes, first of all, really solid dig. Reading that tip. And then Kyleen Philomawa, thumb down, quick arm swing, painting that sideline. Leading score on the floor. Kyleen Philomawa with her 10th kill. Richardson now on the outside, tools the block for another kill for number eight in black. Good set by Victoria Hensley, pin to pin. Kept it at tempo and got it to Richardson's shoulder. So one point lead early on here for the Owls in set three. Philomawa got there on serve, receive. Taylor Head turns up the heat on offense. Off speed, meanwhile, for the Owls. Snyder off the right side was rejected. Robertson tried to dig it up and dug it under the net. Kyla Rue had a lot of time. The middle blocker from Florida Atlantic had a lot of time because it was an off system, out of system set, nice high set. They had a lot of time to set that block in the right place and press. Rue and Rosato teaming up for the double block for the Owls. Head back to work at the pin for the Knowles. Back set Richardson. And that will be somebody to keep an eye on here in set three. You get the feeling, Madison, that Florida Atlantic's going to need to get somebody else going. It could be Richardson here. They're going to need an X factor like Richardson to step up and generate some kills for their team. Coach said Richardson's working on finding the connection, and she's very close to it. She has three of the Owls, five points in this set, tight to the net. The point is going to go to Florida State, and I believe Rue was called for being in the net. Fernanda Nelson's pulling the challenge card, and that'll be the first time we have gone to the monitor here tonight. Yeah, it's been a pretty clean game, both sides. But they will be challenging a net touch here. The call was that it was a net touch. Florida Atlantic says they weren't in the net. And we'll see if Florida Atlantic is correct. So Kim Wisham, as you mentioned, Madison confirming that it is a net touch that the Owls are challenging. And a quick confirmation, Kim Wisham letting us know as she makes her way down the scores table. You can see Madison, the net vibrating as well. Exactly, and sometimes in the heat of the moment, you don't feel your arms touch the net. She was very convinced that she wasn't in the net, but that's just what happens in the heat of the game. You get two challenges per match nowadays in the NCAA. It used to be three. If you use it, you lose it regardless. Now it's two. If you're right, you keep it. In this case, FAU, or Florida Atlantic, I should say, um, was incorrect. They're down to one for the remainder of the match unless we get to a fifth, at which point they would get the second one back. Back set Richardson. Out of the middle, there's Corey Lewis, and Lewis is in double figures. And Corey Lewis makes it look easy. She's up there on the block, forcing Richardson to go high and over there, generating a nice three pass. Corey Lewis gets off the net and gets the kill to that deep corner. Kill number 11 for Corey to go along with six blocks. Rosado turned back. Good coverage. Nice stretch there by Henke. Both teams laying out, making plays. There's Northam getting it up ahead. 
And Richardson sends the free ball over. Henke again, this time she's got the kill. And one of the advantages to having Corey Lewis being in the air constantly and calling for that set is Florida Atlantic's middle blocker stuck with her, opening up a one-on-one -on -one situation for Henke, who had a nice, easy cross-court swinging down. 3-0 run for the Knowles on the backside of that net touch by the Owls. And a short serve, it'll be an ace serve for FSU. Great serve by Florida State. It was short around the 10-foot line. That'll be Emery Dupe's second ace of the night. Knowles leading by one off a 4-0 run. And she drops it in short once again. Rosado. Caught some hands, Philomala transitions. Rosado again, hunting the sideline, might have got a touch as well. Either way, a kill for Valeria Rosado. Good range there by Rosado, who swung a couple cross court, got dug, and then here going, just sneaking it through the middle block and the right side block of Florida State. Norris back in the libero jersey for Florida Atlantic. She serves, and FSU sides out immediately with Taylor Head. And you can see how much power Taylor Head has in her swing when that set is a tempo set all the way to the pin to her shoulder. She uses all of that momentum in her approach to contact that ball high and get the kill. Seven kills on 16 swings for Taylor Head at the pin. 438, the hitting percentage for Taylor. Richardson has been the hot hand in this set for the Owls. And a net call will go against Florida State. Florida Atlantic not giving up at all. There's been some long rallies. Florida Atlantic sticking in it, but Florida State just in the net there. And sometimes that happens when you turn to transition off the net quickly. Yane Henke called for being in the net for the Knowles. Here she is on the attack, and there's another kill for Henke. That's Henke's fourth kill. She's been dynamic on defense as well, but we can see how much of a value she is for the Florida State Seminoles. When she's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, she can terminate almost every time. Out of the middle, there's Dyer just dropping the hammer, and that swing's got to feel good for Madison Dyer. That'll be her fifth kill now on six swings. Look at this swing by Dyer, identifying Kelsey Perry's hands so well and then just swinging straight down her body. We've seen her hit that area of the court twice now. Dupes on serve, receive, feeling on the run. Perry had to wait on the set. Rosano off speed, picked up by Henke. Philomawa lets it fly. Anderson digs it up. The redirect by Perry misses the sideline. Point to the Owls. They lead 9-8. Good dig by Brianna Anderson who's in the libero jersey at the moment. She's tied for first coming into this match with 79 digs. She makes great reads on the ball. That was a must-have point for Florida Atlantic. 79 digs, 60 of them were last weekend alone for Anderson. Dyer got up there and forced the free ball from Florida State. Now it's Dyer on the attack turn back. Now setting the pin, and Robine goes down the line for the kill. And the Owls have stepped it out to a two-point lead in what is a must-win set for Florida Atlantic. That's that 1-6 seam for Robine. Coach said she's got a lot of range and a lot of shots, and she likes to hit every single area of the court. Philomala jammed up a bit on serve, receive. Had rolls it from the back row. Dupe stretches and got it over. Now it's the Owls out of system. Robine attacks it. That's a strong out of system swing and equally strong defense by the Knowles. Dyer out of the middle puts an end to the rally. And a gritty defensive effort by the Knowles comes up empty. The Owls are rolling midway through set three, a 3-0 run for Florida Atlantic. It's that play to win mentality. Florida State doing everything they can to keep the ball alive. FAU not taking their foot off the brakes. Florida State are just so gritty. Kenna Phelan showing us why she's a really good beach player as well. She's very dynamic. 
But then Florida Atlantic finishing that play with a lot of power. Seven kills on 19 swings for the Owls as a team, hitting 368. Rosado into the tape. And that puts an end to a 4-0 run. Rosado tried to speed up her approach. That set a little low, so Rosado came into it quickly, but just contacted it a little too low. First to 25, win by two for this third set, a must-win set, in fact, for Florida Atlantic. Robine off speed, good stretch by Henke. Philomala picked up by Rosado. Robine off the edge of the block and out. Smart swing by the veteran at the pin. And it's good defense for the Owls that's keeping them in it, and then the aggression from the attack. Coach Nelson said they want to be the best ball control team in their conference, and right now their ball control is looking really solid. Looked really good in set one as well. Dipped in set two, and the Knolls ran away with it. And here are the Owls once again. Robine off speed. Heady stuff by the senior. There's Robine showing all of her tools and all of her range. We've seen her hit a couple deep balls, and there she elects to go off speed, roll shot, right into that middle area of the court where no one is. Right into the campfire for yet another kill for Robine, her seventh kill on 16 swings, hitting 438 at the pin. Great numbers. Feeling on the run, sets Philomawa. Hard cross swing, and Philomawa finds the court once again. Philomawa is having an extremely incredible night. 11 kills on 19 attempts, hitting 579, even off the net, which is so impressive. She was able to find those sidelines. 579 for Philomawa. Rue off speed, picked up by Robertson. Head back row, Rosado dug it up. Robine rejected and off of her head it caroms out of play. A stuff block for the Knowles and a big time forward. And in matches past, we've seen Florida State propel forward and gain more points because of their block. Their block has the ability to change the momentum onto their side. Hensley setting the back row, Rosado finds the sideline. And Hensley is just dishing out dimes all over the floor for Florida Atlantic. Coach said Hensley, her IQ is really high, and she's good at seeing the block and identifying the hot hands. Rosado's been hot hands for her from every area of the court tonight. The lead back to three for the Owls, visiting Tallahassee from Boca Raton. Knowles needed to wipe up the floor for a moment. As we approach the midway media timeout, Hensley serves it in once more. Lewis out of the middle, dug up by Anderson. Rosado on the run, rolls it into the net. And sometimes when a attacker is the hot hand, the setter wants to go back to them and kind of force it. I feel like that set was almost a little forced, and Rosado having to scramble, get there, and then jump off one foot to get that swing. Philomawa down the line. Hensley does well to set that ball out of the net. Snyder with a shove down the line. There's another kill for Maddie Snyder. There's that smart decision making by Maddie Snyder with that tip down the line. She uses her momentum in her approach to power tip that ball nice and deep to the corner. Out of the meadow, there's Robine coming in from her pin position. Great offense there by Florida Atlantic to lead by two midway through the set. And Florida Atlantic was the underdogs. They are the underdogs coming into Tully, and they're playing like it in a sense that they're playing very gritty, very aggressive. They're not rolling over, even though Florida State has the first two sets. They're not rolling over at all. They're aggressive from the service line. They're controlling what they can control, which is that first contact. And then Victoria Hensley in the center position doing a really good job at spreading out her offense and feeding the hot hands. Oh, 11 kills for the Owls as a team in this set, riding a wave of momentum here, Madison, when they need it most. And that's led by Valeria Rosada, who's done a really 
good job at coming up big for her team when they need her. Caitlin Robine, you saw there, is second in the team in kills. And she's got a lot of tools. She hits a lot of areas of the court. They run her through the middle. They run her from the outside, and sometimes they run her from the right side. I say all that to say Florida Atlantic is running a balanced offense, and it's led very well by Victoria Hensley. Aside from set two that got away from the Owls, they have really proven themselves to be a strong contender in the American Athletic Conference, and they have given the Knolls a real fight here tonight, Madison. And I talk about the balanced offense and the fight that they're doing so much because Florida State's block has the ability to shut down an offense completely. But since Florida Atlantic is running through the pin, through the middle, through the back row, Florida State's not able to get into a rhythm and not as comfortable. And Florida Atlantic is ahead by two. Out hitting the Knolls in this set, 286 to 207. The Owls hitting 236 for the match to FSU's 395. Off the kill, coming in from the pin to the middle, Robine now goes back to serve. And she goes with the jump top, picked up by Dupes. Out of the middle, there's Corey Lewis. Put that ball straight down for the Knolls. That was the perfect decision on the three pass. Control what you can control, and then set your most efficient attacker. That's Corey Lewis, 12th kill, hitting over 600. Seven blocks as well for Lewis, who has manned that net very well for the Knolls tonight. Off the right pin. There's Kayla Richardson, and FSU is starting to feel a little momentum on their side of the net as well. The Knolls tying it up at 15. Emery Dukes with that perfect pass and left back, and then Lauren Robertson also does a good job at setting the hot hands. It's Corey Lewis. Why not set her again? She's doing a really good job at hitting away from the middle block. Overpass. Taylor Head tries to put it away. Good stuff there by the Owls, playing it off the ceiling. Head hunting the sideline does catch a touch. And so Taylor Head does get the kill that she was looking for, but the Owls made her play one ball more. Dubes drops it in short. Rosado cross court. I think she got a touch, and it won't really matter, Madison. That found the floor on its own. Rosado has a nice long approach. I like that they went to her in serve receive. She's leading her team in kills right now, leading her team in kills on the season. And she's their go-to in crunch time like this. Ava Norris back to serve. 16 all, set three, and Taylor Head turns up the heat once again. Madison Dyer, middle for Florida Atlantic, not able to close the block. And with a tempo set that quick to the outside pin to Taylor Head, she's able to take advantage with a fast arm swing and drive through that open gap. That serve out of play by Kenna Thielen. Not her best serving night. She's been one of FSU's best servers, though. You're entitled to an off night every once in a while, right, Madison? Absolutely. And the service game is half a mental one as well. And you can tell she's a little bit in her head right now from the service line. But we've seen her be incredibly dynamic from the service line before. Strong serve there by Dyer. Back row attack for Lamau. Overpass that Henke nearly cleaned up. Had this time going off speed. Got everybody playing back after those last couple of swings, and she dropped it in short. Exactly. Florida Atlantic on their heels on defense, expecting that hard-driven cross-quarter down-the-line swing from Taylor Head. But nope, she's got great court awareness, great vision, and saw the open court. One-point lead for the Knowles, 18-17 in this third set. Dyer off speed out of the middle, dug out by Philomawa. Rosado tools the block for a kill. I've been very impressed by the athleticism of Rosado working in transition every single play to get off the net and be in the air for her team. Rosado on the preseason all-conference team was a conference second teamer a season ago in the Owls' first year in the American. This year has already garnered an honorable mention honor in one of the weeks, the American Athletic Conference actually doing weekly honorable mentions. She and Hensley both actually receiving one so far early on this year. Philomawa turned back, dug over. There is Rosado rolling it. 
Thielen took the first ball. Knowles operating out of system. In system, though, are the Owls, and Dyer hammers it home. Dyer loves that cross court deep to the corner swing. She runs a three set, which is a gap set. She spreads out the blockers, the Florida State block, and then drills it into that deep corner. A timeout on the floor as Florida Atlantic surges ahead, 19-18, approaching the red zone in set three. Back here in Tallahassee, approaching the end of set three, Valeria Rosario set to send it in once again. Rosano, the leading scorer for the Owls. Corey Lewis leading the Knolls, each with 13 kills. Henke down the line. Rosano, back row attack, dug over the net. Hensley calls her own number. Good stretch by Phelan. And into the campfire it goes. A kill for number six, Caitlin Robine. What a reach by Caitlin Robine. That set really tight on the net. Florida State block close to that. But first of all, way to make yourself a weapon, Hensley. Way to demand the block respect you. And then that opens up Robine, who reached for that ball and tipped it right to the open court. And into the red zone go the Owls. First time they have been first into the red zone tonight. 20 to 18, and there's Dyer. Thought maybe she came away with the block, but it got snuck inside of her by Kelsey Perry. And all that is sometimes as the middle blocker, if you're not pressed over the net at the right time, it's easy for that ball to get snuck in between your arms and the net. So FSU sides out at a crucial time. Still, though, trailing by one. Henke back to serve. What a swing! And that's the advantage of the quick tempo set. It's a little bit inside, so Florida State's block set up a little bit on the inside, and then Kelsey Perry late to close. But actually, Robine swinging down the line just to the right of Maddie Snyder. Really good swing by her. Dyer back to serve. Head picks it up on serve. Receive, and Kyleen Philomala tools the block for the kill. That is 12 for number 12 in white. And it's good to side out, but if you're Florida State, you need to make a play on defense. You need to get a point in transition here. Robertson down the line. Rue off speed, picked up by Philomawa. Turned back to the floor, and that'll be another kill for the Knowles. Corey Lewis just hammered that right into the Florida Atlantic block. And kudos to Corey, Corey Lewis for getting off the net, being up in the air. That wasn't the easiest ball to hit. It was a little bit on top of her, a little bit behind, but she tooled the block very nicely. 14 kills for Corey Lewis tonight. And there's another block. And that's the sign of a good block. Caitlin Robine loves that quick tempo set, a little bit inside the antenna, but Florida State sees that, tracks that good eye sequence by the Seminoles and shuts it down. A 3-0 run by the Knowles in the red zone, flipping the script on the Owls. Boy, oh boy, this is some exhilarating stuff, Madison. It is, and, and that's what I was talking about before. You need to get some points in transition. You need to get some points on defense. Florida State doing a solid job at siding out, but the game exists past siding out, so now they're getting points in transition. They're accumulating some points with that big block of theirs, and they've taken the lead. Well, I mentioned just a little bit earlier about Rosado leading the way for Florida Atlantic, and I mentioned Corey Lewis doing the same for Florida State. It's true, those two have really been terrific tonight. 13 and 14 kills, respectively. When you're at the pin, you're gonna get some more swing, so the hitting percentage not gonna be as high as it would be for middle blockers. 257 is solid on the outside for as many swings as Rosado has taken, and Lewis has been almost immaculate tonight. She has it. Both of these players with a lot of experience. Rosado, a senior. Corey Lewis, a senior. So they're true leaders on their team. Oh, by the way, Rosado, 35 swings to Corey Lewis's 20, just to sort of go back to that point. A lot of times, especially when plays break down, setters are going to go to that pin over and over and over again. And why not when you got one like Rosado? Exactly. And, and she carries a really heavy load for her team. 
And she does it with a lot of confidence. She's had a great night, and she's, as we've talked about, gotten 35 sets. A must-win set for the veteran and her Owls, but it's Florida State on a 3-0 run, leading at 22-21 late here in the third. Robine off speed, picked up by Head. Out of the middle, there's Corey Lewis, picked up by Rosado. Out of system here for Kai Filamawa. And a huge block by Kyla Rue. Kyla Rue is a big presence up there at the net. It was an out of system set, a pretty solid set. But Kylie Filamawa swinging high and into the hands, cross court of Kyla Rue. Hensley started this set off. She's back to serve once more. Out of the middle, Corey Lewis. Great effort there by Anderson. Free ball, though, to Florida State. Philomala hard on the cross, and another kill for Kai. In my head, whenever I see a free ball go over the net, I say, got to capitalize. And that's what Florida State just did. Great set by Lauren Robertson, who feels the block so well. She feels that middle blocker all the way over there with her, and then set up the outside attacker for a one-on-one -on -one where she got the point. Critical timeout here by Florida Atlantic. Completely understand why Fernanda Nelson is going to call it. Important moment in the match. Heck, maybe you ice Kai Filamawa and you knock things up at 23. Madison, what a match and what a third set. It's been a really fun atmosphere and props to Florida Atlantic, who came in with a really solid underdog mentality, not playing to survive, playing to win, and playing like it. Florida State has a big block. They're voted the 20, top 21 in the country, and they're handling it pretty well. Florida Atlantic has a lot of fight. They really have, and Coach Fernanda Nelson, she joked with us. She said, it might be the inner Brazilian in me, that chip on the shoulder mentality, but that's the mentality I want my team to have. And you mentioned it earlier, Madison, don't play to survive, play to win. What's the worst thing that happens? You lose, at least play to win. Exactly, and, and what an opportunity this is to get the chemistry going against a really top elite blocking team. She said they also have a culture of love, family, and selflessness. She said these girls never take a swing for themselves, and it's evident out there on the court. Yeah, she said she hoped that people tuning in would catch that this team has chemistry, uh, chemistry and fire. I think they've done their part to put that on full display here tonight. They're gonna need even more fire here. Down one, late set three, a set they must win. Kyleen Filamawa back to serve for the Knowles. Hensley goes to the pin, Robine rejected, picked up by Anderson. Good coverage by the transfer from LSU. Snyder is shoved down the line, no touch, says Mark Edsel. Point to Florida Atlantic, we're tied at 23. And I think we're gonna see a challenge. Maddie Snyder thought she grabbed the fingertips of the opposing block. So it took Getting to the third set to see our first challenge, and now we've got two challenges in this third set alone. Chris Poole now calling his first. Florida Atlantic earlier in this set challenge that they were not in the net on a net touch call. They were incorrect. We'll see if Chris Poole and the Seminoles are correct that Maddie Snyder maybe caught a hand on the attack. And this is a crucial point. This late in the red zone is a two-point swing here. Terrific looks by our crew. Madison, what do you see? In I think it might have just missed the tops of the fingertips. If it did, though, it was extremely close. And if you're a head coach, you're going to trust your players. And you can understand why Maddie Snyder immediately is calling touch. The angle that ball comes off her hand, she's likely thinking that's got to touch a hand at the very least. I'll tell you what, I agree with you. I think that's the right call by the officials. I think this is going to remain point out. I think it will too, which means Florida State's really going to have to step up and serve receive and gain a point on serve receive, but we'll see. We'll see if what the this, official says. Sorry there, Madison. If this call is in fact confirmed, it means essentially whoever wins this next point will have set point. And if it's FSU, it's match point. Exactly. It's a race to two. So it's who can deliver in the red zone when you only have two points, give or take. 
FAU playing with a lot of guts. Florida State looking pretty comfortable, pretty calm. It could go either way. And it's such an important point in the match. I also have to say, I love the fact that Kim Wisham is being very careful, taking a look at every angle here. You want to make sure you get the calls right. And the officials that I've seen so far this season have been terrific with their calls on the floor. She's relaying her decision all the way down the table. And we suspected it. It was confirmed. Point to FAU in a very, very important sequence. Now it's a race to two. Can Florida State score on serve receive? We'll see. Tip the cap to our crew. That's a terrific angle right there. That, that look right there tells the tale. No touch, indeed. Robine, though, service error. And so if you're Florida State, you lose the challenge, but you ice the server, and it's match point for the Knowles. Exactly. A challenge also serves as a little timeout, a little momentum stopper, and that ice the server right there. Huge point for Florida State. And if you're Florida Atlantic, take the extra second, gather your breath, wipe the floor, maybe make Emory Dupes think for an extra second. It'll be the junior to serve match point. Rosado off the tape and down. Rosado did not have a lot of room for error. That was a big, brave, confident swing by her. She elected to swing pretty sharp cross court and snuck it right inside the left arm of Corey Lewis. Some free volleyball here in set three. We're going beyond 25, and Corey Lewis puts FSU on the doorstep once again with their 15th kill tonight. Lauren Robertson is such a good decision maker as a setter. That's an attribute that you need to have as a setter. She's a great decision maker. Going with Corey Lewis on that one. Kenneth Phelan will serve it in. She goes with the float. Out of the middle. It's Phelan digging up a huge swing by Dyer. Look at Anderson crashing in, and that collision puts an end to it. The Owls fought to the bitter end, and it's Florida State who finds a way to win in a sweep, but a very tight one at that. I will say, the 